set four notes just for honors on acids and bases. Hopefully we get to this um, and can do a brief intro of acids and bases before you get to chemistry. Um, if we don't get it to it, it's not the end of the world, but I do love to get to it with my honor students if, if possible. So let's talk about it. Acids. These are compounds that break up in water and they give off hydrogen ions. Um, again, they give off hydrogen ions. That is the key. Okay. They, another way of saying it is they accept electron pairs. An example is H2SO4, or sulfuric acid. It will break apart in water and give off those, those hydrogens on it. Some common acids that you may interact with in your life are HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. It's in your stomach. Um, H3PO4, phosphoric acid in so, um, sodas like Coke. Um, HC2H3O2, which is acetic acid. And H2C6H6O6, which is, is ascorbic acid, which is in citrusy fruits. All acids um, tend to have similar properties. One is that they always have at least one hydrogen atom that could be removed or, or given off. And usually you can see it at the beginning of the formula, which you may have noticed for each of these. Again, we said it before, but they release hydrogen ions in water, so they form H3O+, which is a hydronium ion, which again, you'll learn way more about in chemistry. Acids often taste sour. Think about orange juice or even some sodas. Um, they can be used to neutralize bases. They are corrosive to metals, meaning that they react with metals to form hydrogen gas. And here's an example of zinc and hydrochloric acid making zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So those are just some properties of acids. Now, bases. Bases are compounds that form OH- hydroxide ions um, when placed in water. Another way to say it is that they accept hydrogen ions or that they donate an electron pair to another compound. An example is NH4OH, which is ammonia, which you may have in cleaning products. Some examples of common bases are um, soap, which has potassium hydroxide in it, um, milk have magnesia, which is a laxative that has magnesium hydroxide in it, um, Drano, which has sodium hydroxide in it, and baking soda, which has sodium bicarbonate in it. Some properties of bases are they produce um, hydroxide in solution, so there's usually an OH in the formula. Um, they exist as a crystalline solid when they're not dissolved in something. Think about baking soda. They taste bitter, not sour. They can neutralize acids, and they can often feel slippery, like soap. Now, two things that both acids and bases share in common. They both form electrolytes in solution. Electrolytes, you may have heard that word with Gatorade. It's a compound that breaks apart in water and it produces charged particles, which are ions, which hopefully you remember from our last unit, that can actually conduct electricity. Um, another thing about acids and bases is that they're both corrosive to skin and body tissues if they're really acidic or really basic. So that's kind of interesting. Now, I mentioned that acids can neutralize bases and bases can neutralize acids. So neutralization is when equal amounts of acid react with a base and they form a salt, like which is an ionic compound, and they also form water. So for example, HCl is an acid, and when I react that with sodium hydroxide, which is a base, I make sodium chloride, which is a salt, and water. That would be a neutralization reaction. Something else I must mention, just in your, again, this is the briefest overview of this of all time, but I have to mention the pH scale. pH is a measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration in a substance. A lower pH is less than 7, all right? That's this side. It means you have really high hydrogen ion concentration, and that means something is very acidic. The, the lower it is, the more acidic it is. Higher pH, which is on this end, is greater than 7. It means um, high hydroxide concentration, low hydrogen ion concentration. And these, the higher you go, the more basic it is. Um, an example of this is all these that we see on here. And then right in the middle, number 7, which is neutral, is water. And notice your blood is really right out of 7 also, just because your blood is um, it has a lot of water in it. And last but not least, litmus paper. 
This is something we can use to measure pH. Some of you may have used probes before, but the paper is pretty easy. You just place it into a substance and let it dry. And if it turns more red, it's more acidic. If it um, less than three is considered a strong acid. And if it turns more bluish colors, it's basic. And a higher than 10 would be considered a strong base. So you basically dip it in and then you would hold it up to the color scale to kind of see what number it is on the pH scale. And that's it. Again, briefest summary ever.